Hi guys, I hope you're all doing very well. Thank you very much for clicking on the video. Before we get into the latest instalment of the James and Flab for Now podcast, I just want to say a massive thank you to the guys at Stereo. We are partnering with Stereo in this video. We're going to be telling you all about it and showing you some clips from one of our first shows on the Stereo app. The Stereo app is a platform for you to broadcast whatever you want, to have real life conversations with cute little avatars, and also you get to interact with voice notes during the episodes that you make. We'll tell you all about it in the video, but as I said, massive thank you to Stereo. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out and check out our next episode. What a goal, G. <laughs> you do with your tongue. <laughs> Secondly, turn it off, turn it off. I can't watch it again. Nico. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the James and Flav for now podcast with me, James Alcott, and Flav. There he is. You know those World War Two people that they're really into the World War Two. Yeah, I'm not my friend he's... Craig. Like my friend Craig. Yeah, suspect. Got to you know just keep an eye on him. What's you know? Why we were so obsessed by something so horrendous? That's just yeah. Just, I mean, just, I'm just a bit keep like that. An eye with... on him. Uh, what is it? Is there a weird thing that not weird thing, but is there a thing that people wouldn't expect you to be into that you're into? Like I, I, I'm really into like American politics. I just, I just really like if I see anything with Did American politics, I just like I just go, oh yeah, I definitely watch that. Just like it just gets me, it tantalizes me. I would say. Um, kids falling over. <laughs> yeah, kids crying at football. More on that later, actually. More on that later. Uh, I've got to say uh, thank you for all the comments, although it is starting to become a bit of a slog. Uh, I'll be honest. It's, uh, it took, takes an hour just to read mm. through all the Derby what? games and all the comments. And look, loads of them are funny. Some of them, of course, aren't. Or you're just in the mood where you're like, however, don't worry. We've got... Basically, this podcast is going to be uh, a character assassination of Jamie Vardy after last week when we asked you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Vardy is the type of guy who... And there are so many that made me chuckle because that's basically how it works. I literally go... <laughs> right, you're in. <laughs> it's as simple as that uh, with the comments. So, so there's a lot of Jamie Vardy ones. Uh, actually, actually, right, let's, let, there's so many. I'll give you. I'll give you four now. <laughs> four. Uh, four off the bat. Yeah. Where is it? So the, this is this is uh, the kind of guy. Jamie Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy. Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, lots to talk about. High quality rumors, petty acts, um, the story of the badge, which involves Flav this week. Uh, we've got so. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. and we can talk about football as well. Oh, and there's a really good uh, what have you won from Garrett. Congratulations to Garrett. But Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy. Uh, who would you like the guy to be next week, Flav? For the people in the comments. Um, let's do. Um, <laughs> sorry, just in the chat. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you uh, all, to all the patrons who uh, the last three comments just go. Uh, well, once it's morning slugs, then Rob Turner goes. Oh, boo hoo, Jim. <laughs> Such a hard life, Jim. Yeah, I had to read. <laughs> I had to read comments from people invested in my content. Yeah, shame <laughs> on me. Shame on me. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, who are we going for next week? Uh, uh, let's go for Roy Keane. Roy Keane. Good. Okay, Roy Keane. It is uh, Jamie Vardy. There's going to be loads. I'm just going to pepper them in every time I feel like dipping into it, into the well. Uh, of Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy. Uh, Joe Hughes, Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy to open a packet of crisps by squeezing the bottom until the top opens. (laughs) 89 likes. Very good. Football football podcast. Football podcast. Uh, Quincy, Jamie Vardy is the type of kid at school to show up with nothing for lunch but a two-litre bottle of Coke and a sharing bag of Doritos. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Jamie Vardy is the kind of, this is Cormac sorry <laughs> Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy to say your mum to his kids when they prove him wrong <laughs> uh, Finn Gilmore Jamie Vardy is the type of guy to steal dust caps from cars to put on his BMX <laughs> uh, and uh, last one for, for a bit and then we've got more later in the show stick around Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy from our oh, ill mind of Callum Jamie Vardy is that kid in high school who got bullied for starting a rap career <laughs> Oh, that's quite good. Can I um? Can I show you something? That's good. Can I show you something? Someone it, explain this shit, shit to me, please. Go on. Uh, is it the stereo app? 
Oh, we're doing that now. Yeah, go on. We've been on stereo twice with some high quality uh, chat, basically. Uh, for those of you who don't oh, yeah. know what stereo is, it's a new app. There's loads of people been on there uh, over the last week or so doing shows. I think Smith's been on there. Let's Talk FBL's been on there. Rory's been on there. And of course, me and Flav have already yeah, done bit, two shows like on that. it. It does look a bit like that. We're going to show you... I'm going to show you a clip in a second. Oh, are well, you going to show it? All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the stereo app is, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a simple app that you can broadcast live on. Um, we're going to show you a clip from the first episode where we had a very uh, interesting discussion about uh, the, <laughs> the 90s quiz show, Golden Balls. Uh, the great thing about the app is the fact that you can send in voice notes and we play yeah. them within the show, which you'll see in this clip. There's a link in the description. Come and join us. Uh, tomorrow, we've done two shows. We're going to do our final show this week at 12 tomorrow, Friday. Be there. Bring your voice notes. Bring your voice. Come and Can't talk think of questions and drop them in and we go through all of them uh, within an hour. I really enjoy it. To be honest, like, you no, re- you yeah. really love it. Like- <laughs> I really, really like it. I don't know. There's something weirdly fascinating about watching your little face talk to me in avatar, avatar form. form. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's really good. It's very good. Right, guys, so here is a clip from our first show. We've done a second show, which you can go back and listen to as well if you want to listen to us a little bit more. And like I said, we've got a show tomorrow, Friday, at 12. So uh, come and join us for that final one. Link is in the description. Download the app. Really easy. We'll see you there. What? So what's going on? This is interesting, this app, because people want to get involved. There's a call, isn't there? And, and there's also a voice note here, James. Yeah, Unfortunately, it says that if if I if I answer the call, then you then you're out, you're finished. <laughs> so if I answer the call, you finished. Uh, I quite like that. Maybe. I like that power. That's a um, bit like um, during the Golden Balls, you earned this money with someone with like a partner, and at the end you had to either share or steal. You got given a golden ball, and you had to decide to you put it share. Oh, or steal. one episode of that where this woman plays this bloke so hard, it's going. Of course I'm not going to. I've got children. I'm never going to steal this. And he's like, I trust you. This means a lot to me. Please. We're both. And, and, the, and the missus is going, no, you wouldn't do it to me, would you? You wouldn't do it to me. And he was like, of course, look, trust me. And she did it. With the golden ball thing, if you do some basic economics, you understand that every time you should go for steal because you'll get either all the money or no the money. Whereas if you do share, you'd either get half the money or no the money. So none of the money. So here's another one. What would you have done then on uh, Golden Balls? Surely you steal. There's no disadvantage to stealing. Either you get some money or you don't. Maybe that's just uh, showing me the kind of person I am, but I probably wouldn't share just in case they're lying to me. Right, so uh, all, Flav, that's, that's, Yeah, he, he's right. And he's right. It does show, show, show us the kind of person he is. Look, there's like a, an option here. Do you do the kind thing or do you just get all the money? <laughs> Do you know what John's tough about all this stuff, right? I go, right, we've done our, you know, go, oh, fantastic, brands invested in us. We've gone, they've gone, right, we'd love you to, we love you guys talking. Let's get you talking on the stereo uh, platform, great platform. Come back. And I'm thinking, right, what are we going to now? And I've got quotes of the pod in front of me now. And I'm just like, oh, no. Like, yeah. So if you're any representatives from stereo, that's enough now. You've watched it now. This is just me boring football <laughs> chat for the next hour. Off you go. Off this you go. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs> right, you've had you a bit. This yeah. is this is our time now. You know how much football stuff we have to talk about during the week. <laughs> this is our downtime, all right. But this isn't the bit where we're judged. This is the bit where we're allowed to just be us for a bit. I tell you what, we'll get to quote the pod actually. But just to, just to safeguard ourselves for the next five minutes, let's do some Chef Glue Night in because I tell you what, mate, we are mate. tearing up the football league right now. <laughs> this is unbelievable. People are still tweeting me like they, they're doubting us, like they're still surprised. The, the thing, look, I tell you what. Don't tweet me. If I if I'm, I'm if I tweet James and see you see the Chef United score, don't tweet me and tell me to score because I know our power. <laughs> They've done not, it again. Edu- They've done it again. You're not educating me on anything. Three and four games they've won. They're uh, staying up. They are staying, are staying up, up. Staying up. Blades are staying up. up. Let's have, I mean they are a little bit of a way off at the moment. Doesn't matter. We've but, guaranteed it. Let's have a look. Put your bets on. Come on, Sheffield United. Come on. This would be some story if we can literally click our fingers and this lot go right up. I do what I'd love. They're safe by like with three games left. 
and then we can choose someone else. Or actually, what would be better? Would it be better if it goes to the final game where like everyone is like, right, I don't care what's going on with the total race. Everyone, watch Sheffield United. Watch Sheffield United's last game. So for those of you who don't know, I mean, everyone should know, we are single-handedly saving this football club um, from dropping into the championship. They are playing Chelsea this weekend, uh, which we can right. discuss at some point. Burnley, last game of the season. Perfect. Absolutely yeah. perfect. So the whole, the whole world will be watching this game instead of, you know, whatever the one is for, for the title or the Champions League places. This game's going to be absolutely huge. Come on, lads. Fantastic. You can turn it around. Um, like, literally, when we started doing this, Sheffield United hadn't... With, with, they'd drawn one and lost fucking 18 or something. Had not. They had two points, I think. Something like that. Right. They had not won a game of football. Full stop. Full Fantastic. stop. Premier League on strings. This is Kefren, I agree. Um, and fittingly... Someone whose name is Wham, because yes, that's what's happened. We've basically just gone Wham. Here you go. Here's the gift of life, Chef Glue. Uh, just checking in. Sheffield United 2, West Brom 1. Something is happening here, lads. Hashtag Chef Glue United. Thank you very much. And Owen Charles, just checking in. Normally, I'll stick 25 quid into my betting account and stick a fiver on an acker on every weekend. In February, I'm putting 25 quid in and backing Sheffield United to win every game. I'll check in in March and let you know how much I'm up. <laughs> you are. We're going to be up. Get on Guaranteed. it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. This okay. is like, you know, you know, it's really irresponsible to tell people that they're guaranteed to get their money back. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, put your house on it. Every bit of money in your bank account on Sheffield United winning every game for the rest of the season. <laughs> you could probably retire Ooh. every single game. All the money you have, take the money off your kids. Sell their PlayStation, sell your car, divorce the wife, get a ring, <laughs> sell it, sell it all, sell it all, right? We're guaranteeing, me and James, James Lawrence Alcott is guaranteeing yep. a win every single game. I just so, love it. If, if, if Wilder beats Tuchel this weekend, come on. Oh, it would just oh, be yeah. glorious. It's printing welcome, money, as Flav says, so make, sh make sure you do it. Make sure you do it. <laughs> Everything welcome, you've got. <laughs> everything you've got, absolutely everything you've got, and don't what like scrimp like you won't have much. You got you know you cash in at the end of the season. Yeah, it will look it will look precarious, you know, putting that kind of money on something. But honestly, you're printing cash. You're printing. There cash. will be moments. There will be moments <laughs> where you think maybe I should cash out here. You know, it's un very unlikely. No team has won eighteen games on the bounce before in the Premier League. No one's done that hmm. before. Till now. Are doing it. Till now. So all, all of your money, put all of your money on it. Yeah. Everything you've got. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, steal. It's steal some. Get some more money. Go and steal some. Yeah. Start some sort of pyramid scheme. Go to <laughs> goes, look, this is guaranteed money. James and Flavor told me this. Have you look and show yeah. show him a couple of clips from previous weeks. Um, yeah. Just to say, actually, on Patreon, because it just popped into my head. Uh, we've got, <laughs> this is ridiculous. So our last four news... <laughs> <laughs> and we've got some new patrons now if you if you really want to be on the inside track when it came to the slug life In, and inside jokes yes um, if you want to get everything you've got to pay yeah we'll tell you <laughs> yeah we'll tell you this one we'll tell you this one but uh, <laughs> but uh, for more you'll have to join us for our weekly mailbag because we have now realised thanks to I can't remember who, uh, who made it up but the last five um, new slugs are Mio uh, Gier Thank you for, for joining us. Appreciate it, mate. Then, Joe Dixon, Jack Belgin, Josh Jones and Joshua Hardy, all of which are now jugs. Um, <laughs> at a higher level. Uh, they, they join other jugs such as Jed Billamore, Jake Barlow, Jude, Jude Critchley and Jake Birdass um, as fellow jugs. Not slugs. Jugs. Yeah. A, a Rob's on the lookout for a few more names beginning with <laughs> R, which would make rugs. So he's like a new clan. So these are... There's like different sort of subsections to the slug yeah. life now, the slug life clan. Football they, they might go to they might go to war one day. Imagine if they go to war, the, the jugs and the rugs. <laughs> to... I tell you what, I'll give you a, I'll give you a helping hand, uh, Rob Rufus Atrill. He's in there. He, he's in he's, there. He, he's, yeah, it's two rugs. There's a Ryan as well. I thought. Yeah. So how many so they right. need to form a clan? <laughs> Rajan Rajan Sharma. <laughs> there you go. The, rug. the rugs versus the jugs. <laughs> Ryan W. Oh wow, it's kicking off. Okay, we've got some we've got some rugs and we've got some jugs. Rab, Rab, Rab's a Oh, rug. yeah, Rab Summers as Rab well. Summers. Yeah, yeah, right, there we go. It's kicking off. Do you, I bet, the rugs. Uh, do you know Ollie, Ollie, Say, Ollie Sack, or Sage, as he yeah. wants to be called, he's just going, mm -hmm. you can't be an O-Ug, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got nothing. you got nothing, mate, sorry. Ugg, Ugg, Ugg. You know, some, the, the jug life chooses you. 
you don't choose the jug life or rug life in this case. Uh, Speaking of cracks, Liverpool are an absolute mess. They play Man City this week. Tom XRV says, hello, lads. We need Man City cracks. Yours sincerely, dry slug. It's like a different language we're talking now. (laughs) (laughs) A number of issues here, mate. Firstly, don't tell us what to do. Yeah. I think um, that was, so that's, that's exactly why I put it in, just to literally just pop, put that on a plate for you, Flav. Off you go, son. Don't tell us what to do. Never tell us what to do. All right, first, where are you going? Please put his name back. I want everyone to make a note of his Twitter, Tom XRV. And if ever during the day you feel a bit frustrated, <laughs> go on his Twitter <laughs> and take it, take it out on Tom. Uh, so in, we, sorry, we, in the first 10 minutes of this podcast, we've said... We've said download the fantastic um, stereo app, but also start a pyramid scheme. Use all your cash and bet it on the team that's bottom of the league, and uh, make, if, if be sure to troll Tom. If you're, <laughs> no, if you're, if, if you're just as you're frustrated at any point during the day, you might stub your toe. Something might not have gone your way. Go to Tom's Twitter and just take it out on him. Um, we need uh, we need Man City cracks. You don't need Man City cracks. You need Sheffield United Manglu. Yeah, and that's what you're getting. And you're a dry slug, so really you're like the lowest of the slug. You're a crust. You're 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 a low, you're yeah you're plug. You're a proletariat. Yeah, plug. <laughs> um, like, thanks for your, thanks for your thanks for your time, Tom. Thanks for your comment. Thanks for your comment. Appreciate it. Uh, right, I think we've uh, got enough distance. Uh, quote of the pod time. <laughs> um, Flav, you were on fire last week, mate. I didn't realise. Was uh, I? Yeah. Didn't, didn't realise. Um, so there's a few in here. I don't even want to read them. I want you to read them because I don't want to be associated with them. Um, okay. So uh, let's kick off. Uh, first of all, well, actually, Jacob Thomas, just to set this up, 10 likes on this bad boy. Make sure you're liking the comments that you like. Makes my life easier. Jacob Thomas, hot take. I thought Flav was a bit blithering. Bit of a blithering, but fun idiot. After this pod, I now think he's one of the greatest thinkers of all of our times. I'm definitely a blithering idiot. <laughs> James of Flav Community Page says, great to hear you've seen the light. Thank you, Lewis. Right, so let's get into these quotes. Um, Jake Atkins' video, quote the pod, the worst part of football is the fans. That's true. That's that Absolutely yours. true. Wow. Stand by it. Do you? Absolutely. They got, Fucking... they got, over the last week, have they got any better? All right, can you do me a favour? Just do me a favour, <laughs> right? I'll just bear what I've just said in, in oh, mind. Oh, God. Right, now <laughs> go to your Twitter. Go to your Twitter. Yeah. Right, now, speakers on. Press the uh, speakers. Yeah. Right. Back to the beginning, please. I've seen this. Right, good. And then press play, please. Nico Rasclap Pepper, you done know? What a goal, G. What the <laughs> you do doing with your tongue. <laughs> Secondly, turn it off, turn it off. I can't watch it again. Nico Hang on, we need to watch it one more time for the know. side. What a goal, What G. a goal, G. It was a good goal. I don't even see the goal. It's irrelevant. This is this is a TikTok problem. The tongue thing. Right, he's a wanker. So turn it <laughs> off, please. Turn it off. <laughs> right. Right, now, can we go back to my, the quote of the week? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the worst, worst part, part of football, football is the fans. Right, let's move on. Yep. Uh, Jacob Thomas, hot take. Oh, we've read that. Ed Nico. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that, this is a good one. I'm pleased with this. <laughs> you're, you're pleased with this. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So I'll tell you what. Pause the podcast right now. Just think. Right. He's pleased with this. What could it be? What could he have said? What, what nugget of wisdom could he have said last week <laughs> that uh, that's made it into the quote of the pod? <laughs> right, Ed Nicole, <laughs> quote the pod. Let us know what Garth Crook smells like in the comments. I think Marzi fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That is good. What, what else did people say? Well, we've got a couple of in. For any of those wondering what Garth Crook smells like, uh, Slab or something for Marzi fan. JH says Garth Crooks smells like sandalwood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Garth, Ryan Maxwell, Garth Crooks smells of coconut oil and Tunisian leather. Nice. Somehow, I have no idea if I've ever truly smelt Tunisian leather, but I feel like I know what the smell is. Yeah, interesting. I get it. Occasionally splashes David Beckham's instinct after shaving <laughs> his cufflinks. Increased collared shirt. Lovely. Really nice. 
Good I used know. to. Do you, I used to do this. Is horrible. When I was young, this is young, and I don't do this stuff anymore, of course. But a night out. I would, in terms of after. Can I hang on? Can I can I just finish that sentence on a night out? Before you went on a night out, you would definitely spray your balls with Lynx Africa. <laughs> Just, just your balls. More of an, I was more of a, more of an Atlantis guy, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I prefer I never Atlantis. Really... Sorry, I like Africa. Saying? It's too obvious. I used to put, I put aftershave on the back of my neck because I thought if you, if say there's a girl, you're gonna like, you're gonna give him a hug. They, their, their nose is gonna be right there on the back of your neck. That is genius. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was all right. That is clever. And mate. they go, you smell nice. And I go, oh, do I? I didn't even remember. That. I don't. Just, links, I just links Atlantis. I it's uh, links Atlantis. Um, so yeah, yeah that's that is a belting tip. Really good yeah, idea. You, go. um, you, go. you know what I would say is like, it's better to smell of nothing for eight months and save up the money you would have done on aerosol and just buy yourself a nice aftershave. It's better to smell of nothing than smell of links. Yeah, especially at during your school years, you don't want to be. Don't don't be the same as everyone else. If after aftershave is actually like a killer when you're going out, it's like, it's it's important. If, if you're single and you want to pull aftershave, a big thing. Okay, football podcast. So is so is perfume to be for perfume. I I had an a weakness for uh, Jean Paul Gaultier. Oh my god, it, there could be the work the those not I'd say unattractive to everybody, but to me, you know, you're not if you don't find everybody attractive. It's normal humans, humans, yeah humans we all like different things mm. so there could be a there could be a person there could be a bloke a bloody bloke wearing female jean-paul gaultier i'd let him have a go on my bum probably <laughs> <laughs> finished over the probably still up for grabs still up for grabs. you'd have to have you'd have to have something about you as well i um, didn't want to laugh then i really didn't want <laughs> to laugh. Out uh right drov pancania Quote of the pod, 92. So this is, I think this is our top comment, maybe. I think this is our top comment last week. Congratulations to Drov. People from Burnley jump up and do headers in the mirror. <laughs> true. Absolutely true. Actually, I'm going to tell you something which I probably shouldn't tell you, but... <laughs> this is this is, um, this is uh, really, like, uh, paying into the um, stereotype of me. Right, I, I went downstairs... Uh, to before match of the day was about to start, I was going to watch it in bed before before I drifted off, and I uh, <coughs> and I put the kettle on, and because uh, it was fans' birthday last week, there's some balloons in the <laughs> there's some balloons in the living room, and we're quite lucky our living room's a decent size, and I was just oh that was it, I went into the room and one of the balloons is like a happy birthday like helium balloon, and uh, so I was just sort of walking around like just waiting for the kettle to boil, and I just like headed h- headed the uh, <laughs> the happy birthday balloon. Course. And then I thought, I thought to myself, God, I haven't played a football game in ages. And so then <laughs> I then, then proceeded to pretend I was playing centre midfield <laughs> in the dark, <laughs> in the living room, pretending, waiting for a goal kick. And I was just trying to remember what it was like, what you were thinking when you got the ball and you played it and stuff like that for about 30 seconds and then, and then went and made my cup of tea. <laughs> and I just, uh, just, lo- I just love you. it. I just love it. I just love it. Miss yeah, that's, lo- miss that's, that's a lovely thing. Eleven that's aside games thing. as well. I haven't played eleven against side games so long. I anyway. don't understand eleven aside. I don't understand it. Right, we're, we're getting into the dark ones now. Um, Flav, you can read mm. these. All right, top one. Uh, quote to the pod: If he knocks it, <laughs> if he uh, so if he knocks it one out to a porn star that has died, he wears a black sock out of respect. Sports podcast, not sports, is it? Football. Um, I, I just repeating something someone has said. I, I didn't come up with that genius. Okay, right. Read, um, read J- the next one. Jay Bard, <laughs> quote of the pod. Why are you fingering the dog? There's nothing there for you. <laughs> it's true. Like, why do people finger animals? Like, what are you getting out of it? Nothing. I don't think many people are. <laughs> there are. There are definitely people fingering animals. Like, why are you doing it? I can get it. Like, I can kind of get my head around if you're putting your dick in one. Because oh, Flav, like, come on now. That's too far. No, my point. All right, all right, all right. Let's let's say. All right, okay. Let's say this. No, like I, I get it. Like, it's, 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 <laughs> go on, go on. How do you get out of this? Good luck. You're being, you're being stimulated, aren't you? So I like if you're into dogs and like you shouldn't be because that's very bad. You know, but, well they don't deserve it. They don't know what's going on, and then suddenly they're fingered. Um, I'm just saying it. The fingering. There's no positive sen- sensation with this. If you're if you're yeah. if you're doing it to a lady and you see a reaction, that's good. 
But dogs, they just stand there like, I presume. I've taken them to the vet. I've seen it. They don't, there's no reaction. Sometimes, occasionally, you get the dog will go. <laughs> oh, my God. You know when they put the thermometer up the dog's ass to check its temperature? Yes, fine. The dogs go. Okay, um, what's the next one? And uh, just because this was just all you, I just thought yeah, that this is this, weird, yeah, because just to, just so it retains quote of the pod, and it, we're both kind of involved. Uh, this is the best. This is the best that there was that I said last week. <laughs> uh, Lucy, Elder, quote of the pod. I haven't got any fruit on me at the moment. Not my best. Not my best week. It's obviously a week. It was obviously a poor week for me last week. <coughs> Clearly. Um, let's get some Jamie Vardy ones just to wash that away. Um, <laughs> that last couple of minutes. Um, Jack Belgin Jamie Vardy's the type of guy to shout what are you looking at to the child in the pub staring at him as he downs his seventh <laughs> fight in 25 minutes yeah yeah definitely Ed ba- all these are all allegedly of course we don't know if these are true or not Ed Bailey if Jamie Vardy was on Come Down With Me he'd be one of the <laughs> one of the this is not my use of the word this is just be one of the munters pretending he's friends with the local but- butcher <laughs> <laughs> no he, def- he he would like it would be a pucker's pie and he would just yeah. Open the packet and stick it in the yeah. oven. The starters would yeah. be crisps. I uh, made it myself. Uh, David Hill, last one. We've still got more to come. Jamie Vardy is the type of guy. Jamie Vardy is the type of guy who, when he was younger, put a big exhaust on a Corsa. That's yes. a good one. He is, isn't he? I just, yeah, I just, like, I just like making <laughs> cars. But I don't get the point of that. I always struggled with that idea. Like, why like, buy a better car? Instead of putting so much money and stickers they, onto they, an old car, the stickers thing is weird. Like that's proper nonsense. That like <laughs> the um, I remember I was stuck behind a car. I accidentally cut him up because mm. I was in the wrong lane. And I was trying to get into a garden centre, and it was Christmas time. And it was busy, and he didn't let me in because he's just a prick with a Ford fucking some car. I don't understand cars to be honest. But the uh, and he had stickers all over it, and he says I'd rather be a something than drive a Vauxhall Astra a Vauxhall and I happen to have a Vauxhall Astra the most boring gammon car you could think of and um, he, obviously I tried to cut him up so that's why he made him angry and he had all <laughs> the stickers over his car about how much he hates the brand Vauxhall so I was already, already on to win a, a winner there and then we were going like, to have a fight I was going to have a fight with him he had two old people in his room I had two kids in mine and the missus it wasn't a great day. Do you know what? The road rage is, is very much like referee. He keyed my car as well. Did he? I think so. I, I, I've wow. got a big scratch card down the side of my car. And it, it wasn't there before then. This was about two, a year and a half ago. Though. Yeah, my, my road rage is very similar to my ref rage. It's like incredibly condescending. So nice. I go. I, the main one I go to, you know, if someone cuts you up and then you, you step in, uh, coming out of um, Peckham a lot where we drive out there because you'd be like lots of traffic lights. Someone would cut you up to get in front of you and then you then you hit a red light two seconds later. Yeah, so I'd, just, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> well done. Wow, look how far you've got. Wow, God, your penis must be ginormous. I just like, not. It is a bit disappointing though when they have cut you up and you do approach them and they do pull down their trousers and their penis is enormous yeah that's yeah uh, that's um, that's frustrating but some sometimes when they sometimes when they drive off they run over it so it works it's out. so big because <laughs> it's so big uh comment of football podcast <laughs> comment of the week <laughs> mr bill <laughs> mr bill banana fun fact when james reaches 90k subscribers he too would have as many babies as a slug that's very good <laughs> very good 22 <laughs> likes on that congratulations to you um ollie ollie sage it's official there's another comment of the week the pod has officially uh-huh. circled back through all possible bits and is now g- going back around Back in 2018, a humble bit called Footballer's Dreams gradually developed into the infamous Footballer's Wangs. I still know the theme tune off by heart. What was it? What, what was the theme tune? Footballer's Wangs can happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jim. He saw, he saw tells. <laughs> Occasionally no, it happens, yeah. but you know you got to be strong. Uh, this... What? Since uh, since then, the pod has gone through multiple bits and now circle back to the point of dreams being a suggested bit. Uh, Bet Flav will bring up his dream about Sean Derry getting up from a hot tub and having a vagina. Next. <laughs> that, that, that is a tr- I did have that dream. I did have that dream. I mean, I've kind yeah, of ruined yeah. the punchline, but I don't know. Do you that's fine. 
the switch. No, we, we, yeah, it was just I can't really remember it as well as I did back then. But you, we, there was a bath, there was a hot tub, and in it was me, Sven Goran Eriksson, and Sean Derry. And he stood up and he had, he had a fanny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I yeah. don't know what it means. Uh, you know, t- uh, to contradict that, Oli Sage. Don't you know? The thing is, I haven't made that up. I genuinely did dream that. (laughs) Sure, he did. Uh, Shoot at square. So this is—I don't think this is a bit, but we do have. You know, we've got new bits arriving all the time, so don't worry about that. Um, But Flav did say so. I just felt like this made me chuckle, so it goes in. That's like that is the rule. Uh, Flav did this thing, like this hand thing, uh, last week, which was in reference actually to someone who was behaving a little bit like. Uh, this dude that we were chatting to earlier did a similar Deco thing as this little bit here. Done this bit. What that. a goal, G. Little bit this, that bit. Sort of like that's a, that seems to be a thing that people are doing these days. What is? Why does that geezer stick his tongue out? Why does he do that? I think... I, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot... Of, there's a lot of that stuff on TikTok. I think... Do you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. Younger people are so aware of how they look on camera now that I think there's this weird thing where, like, sticking your tongue out is kind of, like, sexy or something. Yeah, no, and, it ain't. I yeah. mean, it might be, if you're, if, if, if from a female, it might be in that respect. For a male, I wouldn't... Do you remember, quite... for, for Patreon, we did this thing where we reacted to different things, and then one was, like, e-boys. Yeah, is it that? I think, so in that thing... You see, I think you see, like, you see girls do it as well, bizarrely. They, like, they roll their eyes back, and boys roll their eyes back. And I think sticking your tongue out is a similar thing. Apparently, it's, yeah. Rob Turner said it's uh, turns on the ladies. Apparently, so apparently, it it's a th- apparently it's a thing. Mate, if imagine if you're if you're a lady, and you're watching that, not only is he he's he's talking to his phone, he's doing this, he's saluting a goal. Pepe, he's talking the way he's talking, he's acting hard, he's sticking his tongue out. If that turns you on. If that gets you going. Good luck to you. I'm not going to finish the sentence. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, Flav was saying, what does this mean? In, in a weird moment, last week's pod, go check it out. Uh, shake your hand like that in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, this did make a joke. So he's saying, you, Flav asked, what what would you do with that in the bedroom? Uh, you and, know what, uh, answered correctly, it does have a use. Okay. Well, shoot, I swear, he's figured it out. Shake your hand like that in the bedroom while putting it on their left butt cheek. Distracts and confuses them momentarily. Then, Bam! You stick your finger, you stick your other index finger in their mouth, and she erupts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put it in. I just like that made me laugh, so I had to put it in. She erupts. And then praise her. Bam. <laughs> yeah, praise her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> the pray hands. That's so what did you say that in that room? <laughs> Oh dear! What have you won, Flav? What have you won? Uh, it's Not back. A There's a few different ones. One guy t- wanted to describe a goal that he'd scored. I didn't feel like it was um, interesting enough. I'm afraid. Sorry. And if anyone wonders why your comments not uh, in, it's because I have got a bit yep. tired reading them, or it just probably wasn't funny enough. <laughs> Which doesn't mean it's bad. It just wasn't funny enough on this occasion. Because it, wasn't, it, wasn't... it wasn't good enough. It's fine. It's fine in society to be told what you've done isn't good enough, Jim. <laughs> If you haven't done good enough, that's the reason. It's not, we're just so namby pamby, aren't we? You can't up- say oh, that wasn't good enough because you might upset them and destroy their lives. Sorry, wasn't good enough. Work harder, do better. Okay. Uh, Garrett, what have you won? Well, I love this. Garrett, I won a swim race against an Olympic medal winner, where the medal winning swimmer. Let me, let me start again. I won a swim race against an Olympic medal winning swimmer. <clears throat> So what I love about this comment is he's, he's popped that as a sentence and then he's gone, bang, bang. Let's get that. Let's let that be the top line of the story. <laughs> and then he goes on to explain. It was, an all, it was an all ages mixed gender relay. She had won a silver medal for synchronised swimming <laughs> in the Olympics about 15 years before. She, and she walked away with silver again. <laughs> and I walked away with a gold medal around my neck. So, yeah. <laughs> nice one, Garrett. Yeah. I like Still that. around, didn't he, Garrett? Still around. He's been around since he's an OG. Been around Garrett. the world and I, I, I. Uh, Jamie Vardy the is the kind Sponsored of guy. Sponsored by family. Sponsored by family, yeah. 
Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy who's in the pub and claims every weekend he's had a 14-team acker come in while still only drinking half a pint. Yeah. Uh, side note, I was listening... Uh, this is from Nathan Lacey, sorry. Side note, I was listening while sat at Mackey's drive through with my window open and while being passed my food, Flav starts talking about a dog getting fingered. Safe to say, I'll never return there again. Ben Bull. You know, Jamie, you, know, you know James Vardy when he walks through a, a door and there's like a, just a door frame, the door frame just goes and just goes, just licks the door frame. <laughs> Straight up to it. <laughs> and he looks around... No one saw. Yeah. And he carries on. Dusty. Mm. Ben Bull. Jamie Vardy is the kind of guy that talks to you for just a bit too long in the kebab shop after a night out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll like, oh, come on, mate. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, have a good night. Yeah, I know because yeah. you know you know you go anyway, have a good night. Yeah, I know because I was just because I do the I do cl- I make things out of clay. Do you? Yeah, no, he's no, he's like, Oh, where you, where you going back to then? Where are you going back to? Where are you going yeah, back to? to? Oh, probably then you're like, home now. What yeah. No, then he's like, No, no, no. Yeah. No. Do you, do, wanna, do you, do you ever have that when you're in your house and you've been on a night out and you're looking around and you're like, who's that guy in my house? <laughs> Who is he? Who knows him? And they're like, oh, I just met him in the pub. Why is he here? <laughs> I think that's it. It's more, it's more your life than mine. <laughs> I had loads of times. Just pops back. What you, you coming person? back? What, you, you popping back? If my missus, is, my missus had been in, my missus at the time, she'd been, she'd been in bed, she hadn't come out. And she comes in, she's like, there's like four people in this house I've never met. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. They seemed all right in the pub. Living their life. Joshua Hardy, Jane Vardy's the type of guy to sling piss at a festival. Yeah, in a bottle, piss, and then laugh. That yeah. is the lowest of the low. Mate, like, scum. what are you doing? Scum. Absolute scum to ruin someone's concert like that. It's just crap. It's, it's yeah, you're just a shitty human being. You're mm. just a shitty, shitty yeah, person. Yeah, Jamie. Uh, ben Brooks, Jamie Vardy's the kind of guy to shush his grandma after winning the Christmas game in Monopoly, <laughs> isn't he? Uh, <laughs> Peter G. Uh, Mayfair, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. Mayfair, bitch. Uh, pay up. Jamie Vardy is pay the type up, of guy. Up, up. Jamie Vardy is the type of guy your friends meet on his own in Magaluf and stupidly bring back to your apartment. He wears. Camo, three quarter lengths, and, and a Cabrini wife beater. He sits quietly in the corner, drinks the ends of any bottle of cheap vodka, and bums the last few drags of everyone's camel menthols. <laughs> Eventually, he leaves, and you spend the rest of the holiday trying to avoid him anytime you see him at the pool where he's in the exact same outfit and working with another group of newly arrived lads. <laughs> why, why are you at with people wearing, <clears throat> you know, grown ups with families wearing football shirts on holiday <laughs> grown-ups with families um right so, so let me picture it picture the scene they're in tenerife and they have the kids are running around and the dad the kids ain't got they ain't, they ain't got the jerseys but the dad's wearing a leicester leicester city jersey with a name on the back oh uh, <laughs> um i, yeah, I, 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 I know I, tons of people wear shirts i i get it i just think like at some stage you gotta stop yeah, do you know what I, I, yeah, I, I think there's there's no need for that. Uh, what I actually like is I like the um, Albright. I like the elder statesmen that um, that wear that wear the sort of like the training polo tops. <laughs> so it's like I'm smart, but you know who I support. It's like, like there's a lot a lot of people do that. I quite I, yeah, I, I quite respect that. It's kind of like look, I'm a bit too old for wearing the shirt now, but I do want to represent the club at all times. I quite I'd like see that. if I do see someone out with. A- some sort of Spurs garment I do do a little nod so. yeah yeah I've, I want to do it with, with, when, I, when I see a QPR fan but often I don't yeah um, and finally Tom Gardner Jamie Vardy is the type of guy to genuinely enjoy paintballing <laughs> yeah he's really into it uh, I put this as, in as a calm take um, I'm not sure it is it feels like more like a Flav if Flav was trying to do a calm take that was actually trying to wind people up Right. Um, but it's interesting. Beano Boy 62 just checking in. Hey, James, have you ever heard the saying that if you drop a bunch of rats into a pit with nothing but rats to eat, they'll soon only be able to eat rat? No, I haven't. Um, I would compare that to Burnley fans. Flav was talking about Burnley fans last year and how they just well, loved... I didn't call them rats, though. That's... No, you said they loved dog shit football. Yeah, they absolutely loved dog shit football. So this is his thought on the uh, Burnley... Um, 
thoughts of okay. you last yeah. week. Uh, they've been dropped into a pit, brackets turf more, with nothing but dog shit to eat. After decades of eating the stuff, they have developed an unhealthy addiction and can now only di- digest the, mo- <laughs> the most dog shit of football. Love the pod. Keep up the work. Thoughts? Uh, it's not a calm take at all. That's not a calm take. <laughs> uh, that's what I mean. That's quite explosive. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, no, it's, it's a, re- it's it's a repackaging of your take last week. Yeah, it's the thing that's given them the most success. Uh, you think at the time they came up and it wasn't under him. I think, who did they come up with? Who was their manager when they they had Eagles? And it was always Dyche, wasn't it? Was it, was it Dyche? Uh, are... Oh, God. Was Owen Coyle? Was it Owen Coyle? Uh, yes, yeah, good point. Yeah, well, we're on there. Yeah. Uh, and and they did they did try to play football. Owen Cole had well, he's I don't know where, where he's at now, but he had a moment in the sun. I think it was with Bolton as well, where he's they were playing good football. Same as Mowbray, Tony Mowbray as well. Had, and, and you know when they were up, tried to play good football, but they all went down and they all disappeared eventually. And what Sean Dice is by playing the football they're playing has done incredible things for them. Their, their city holds seventy thousand people, and they're like not not only legitimate, a fucking nightmare Premier League time for almost everybody. So you can completely understand why they love him and why should he change? He shouldn't change. And just, it's once, it's just fucking, I just want him to go away. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm mean about Burnley's because they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'd much rather Leeds stay up. Much rather Leeds stay up. He just gave up. He just like gave up half my friend. <laughs> Right, uh, yeah, interesting. I just want them down. <laughs> um, right. I'm just going to read this comment and then we'll get into a bit of football chat. So actually we should do the signal. Football chat on its way. Uh, Flav, you just keep doing a little bit more, Flav, a little bit more, just so they know you're going to be doing it as well. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Mario27, at this rate, Jimbo isn't even saying any words when he sa- he's saying Derby games. Nah. He's just making a progressively more and more disturbing noise. Luckily, I never hear it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it yet? No, no, no. not yet. <laughs> All right, because I don't know. Right, it's now time because uh, I've looked at the weekend's fixtures and... And... <laughs> Derby games this week. First of all, now this is interesting. Now I'm gonna to, I'm gonna to talk directly to to someone here, Jack Endine. Now Jack Endine has uh, me and him have. Uh, it, I know he watches the content and I appreciate that, um, but he's also a quite spiky character on Twitter. I hope you don't mind me saying that, Jack. Uh, Man United fan doesn't um, likes to voice his opinions. Likes to like likes a little debate or argument, if you will, on Twitter, um, and uh, I just saw this and I just thought, Jack, just touch rattled here, just touch, just a touch rattled. Like this was mm. obviously playing on your, this was on your mind, a lot. And I what what I'm concerned about is, is that it's on your mind a lot. It doesn't need to be. You just you know, Man United fan, just one nine nil, relax. He says this, Liverpool versus Man City. The biggest rivalry in English football, according to no one except Trevor Sinclair. Clown emoji. Yeah. It's a bit rattled, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, don't worry yeah, about but, uh, it. Honestly, yeah, don't worry about it. There is a legitimate frustration, isn't there? Just because they're two... They're not even the two best teams, are they? Because Liverpool are, like, far away. Like, Man City is so good. They're, so, yeah. they're just unstoppable. It's like, after all I've said in terms of fucking how boring the football is... They're just swiping teams away like they don't exist. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair. They look really, really, so, really good, so. don't they? You need someone. We just like. I mean, at some stage, I, I'm not. I'm not ready to sort of pull the trigger just yet uh, on on looking for Man City cracks. Um, I, I wonder if they could do it we on their own. We can't do both. We can't do both. You can only do Sheffield United or Man City. And the we, thing uh, is, mate, you say that though. We did. Just, we did Liverpool cracks and Man Man glue, didn't we? I'm not. I'm not. I need to. We need to put all our energy into Sheffield United Fair because, enough. you know, Man City win the league is Man City win the league, and if they win the league, you know, it's so easy to take, isn't it? Because they cheat. So, just accept it. It's harder to take when Liverpool won the league. 
I'm intrigued by this. This that game this weekend, Liverpool. Isn't it? It's amazing how it's changed at Liverpool. Like the whole feeling, like they were just unstoppable, weren't they, at the start of the season? Like, or, or the, the the feeling around them was. I love that. I love that about football. Liverpool fans were like this. I love that about football. The fact that you know you think something is going to go on forever, and then bang. Like even like the the run obviously of like home wins or not getting beaten. Then they get they got beat by Burnley and Brighton. Everyone just generally laughs at. Brilliant. John, John, John James. <laughs> Go on. Uh, let me let me just say something to you. Go on. All this talk of getting old is getting me down, my love. What song is that? Uh, it's the Verve, isn't it? Yep, like a cat in a bag. Waiting to drown. This time I'm coming down. What's the song? It's not. It's not Bit Sweet Symphony. It's the other no. one. No, I don't know. So I hope it hurt. you're thinking of me. That one. Go on, tell me what's. Now the drugs don't work. Right. They just make oh, you wow. worse, wow. and I know I'll see your face again. That's all I've got to say. Still dominating games, though, aren't they? <laughs> just can't score. <laughs> just can't it's just score. The, just can't score. Every now and then, the enablers have to come out, but they know they can't rely on them this year. So, I mean, something's not right. Something's not right there. <laughs> you watch them pump them now, four 0 or something, because they play against the team that's going to have a go. Probably won't. definitely, definitely. No, they're still, they're still, mate, they killed us. They killed. We weren't. We didn't even have a sniff. It was so depressing. Not that we were any good anyway, but they killed us. Absolutely killed us. So they're still fine. It's just they're not the same as what they were before. I feel like it's... Go on. Sorry. But it did feel quite sweet, is all I'm saying, after all that bollocks about Michael Edwards. (laughs) Yeah, well, they didn't play either of them, did they? I don't know if they were registered yet. I presume they were. Probably not ready yet, no. I'm not surprised they didn't play, but it's just... It just felt good. That's what's going to be fascinating for this game, is like the lineups. For for Liverpool, like who's like who did they do? They chuck them both in. Did you just chuck them both in and go like get on with it now. Um, is Ben Davies out of contract in six months? Was he? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> is he any good? Yeah, he is good. Did, he, you, he did, is you, good. did he stand out when when in in the championship? Uh, yeah, ish. I mean, did did was, Roden was, did Roden stand out? Yes. Yeah. So out of the two, would you say Roden was better or Ben? If you had to pick one for your team, who would it be? Ooh. Would uh, it be probably Roden. Davies, probably probably Roden. From everything yeah, I'd he heard wrote. and read, Roden was... So if that's, of... if that's the case, he's not going to help Liverpool a great deal. He's a bit older, though. I think that's the thing with Roden. He's younger, so it's more of a potential move than... But it just, it just stinks as we need a centre-back. Let's get a centre-back from another club and that will be fine when... <laughs> How, around, around. how? What other way around it is there than needing a centre back and then buying a centre back from a club? Because he comes from another club, people immediately think it's an upgrade on what you've got, and it isn't always. Right, it, Phillips and Williams you. could well be do the same job as Ben Davies did at Preston, but because he's new and he's flashy and like he's a new thing you don't know, you just assume that's an upgrade and the club's done the right thing. But there's no guarantee they have. Do the you other know what? guy? Cool. Seems more likely because they scouted him for so long and he's been playing in the top flight football. But again, no guarantee. It doesn't win in the league, does it? Those signings, they're not. Do you know what, though? I think the focus is wrong on this. The focus, and we, everyone, I think everyone just sort of like slips into it because it's the obvious thing right in front of you. They're not conceding many goals. Like, score more goals. The problem is they don't score goals. That's the problem with Liverpool. You can almost like forget the centre back thing a little bit. They're still completely dominating most games they play. They just can't yeah. score. So actually, yeah, there true. needs to be more heat on the creative players to, to unlock the defence a little bit more. Because I bet <clears throat> I bet the amount of shots they're facing is very, very low, generally. Yeah. I just feel yeah, like, I but, think it's, it's just... And do you remember, you know, to, 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 to give... It's hard to take, regardless of nothing does anyone's going to say makes it easier losing two games, two home games on the bounce when you haven't lost five years or whatever. But it's... Um, what was I say? <laughs> gone. Completely gone. <laughs> 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 
What was I going to say? I was going to try and placate Liverpool fans, and it just my brain went nah. <laughs> Dude, don't, don't do this. You're, yeah, don't you're, do it. You're your heart, this. your heart, your heart pressed the power button and held held it down for six <laughs> seconds, didn't it? Dude, uh, no, God, I literally don't know. <laughs> do, do you know what I struggle to talk about Man City? I struggle to talk about Man City. I think everyone does, well, don't they? So it's boring, so, isn't it? so tricky to talk about them because, like, well, yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're like pure football. Yeah, they dominate every game. Yeah, they like they're glorious to watch. Yeah, every goal they score is like delightful. Yeah, every goal's a tap in as well. Yeah, but it's fine. It's because they're def- they're defensive sorted out. But they they went through about four hundred million pounds to find that centre back pairing that works. Do you know what I would it's say? Like, the what, Gundogan, what is that? the Gundogan thing. Where has he come from? I was like, for a long time, I was like, he's. I don't really get why he's still about because I didn't think he was that great. But now he's got a bit of a free reign to go and score goals because De Bruyne has not been playing. Guy's on fire. Like, playing well, wouldn't he? Seems a bit. Unf- it's like, almost like unf- James, what the numbers he could have had, the player he could have been if he wasn't so selfless. The thing is, James, this what? is our podcast, and we don't have to talk about Man City if we don't want to. That's true. That's true. So just, I'm, I am not. trying to get. I, I need to find get a title from somewhere though. All oh, right, okay. Uh, that's, the, that's the only confusion. I mean, is that enough for a title? I tell you what, guys, help patron, help me out. Like, give us a Let's... give us a question for a title. <laughs> do you want to do something on Mourinho? I mean, do you do you, do you hate him? <laughs> you still well. Know. So we're recording this obviously before Spurs Chelsea, which is um, I... is that good or bad for you? Does it, do you feel are you pleased about that? I'm pleased that I don't have to talk about it. Yeah, uh, I, I don't you... think. Are you wary yes. of talking about it beforehand because you know it's going to get thrown no, in your I, face? No, I'm con- con- utterly convinced we're going to get beat, so I don't really care. The um, we um, shit. No. Kane's coming back next week, hopefully, so that's good. Um, but it's weird. Like uh, we've been talking a bit, a lot about this on the podcast, and we just don't. It's just I can't say anything I haven't said before. It's so boring. Football's so boring. One way of playing. If we don't win, it's awful. If we do, then you make excuses for why we play shit. Um, you it's know. just a lot of placating, isn't there? Yeah, and I can't believe like it's it's not it isn't actually fair. Like, I'm going to whine and cry here. It's not fair that we can be the only club that Mourinho has managed throughout his entire career, and it didn't work yet. It does seem unfair, doesn't it? doesn't make any sense like why us why does he like he's a serial winner we Wait. haven't won a trophy a, a, a meaningful trophy since 1991 a serial winner comes to us he's given players that we spend money in the and it still doesn't work what um what counts as a what counts as a meaningful trophy anything but the league cup anything but the league cup i mean i want to win it but it's not, you know, play second string teams, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? No one takes it seriously, really. Yeah. Park so, Man City. Right. So you and need Man- you need a Europa League or an FA Cup. I need something when the other teams are properly trying. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's fine. But uh, just to help you out a little bit, is you're you're still in both those competitions. I know that. I it's know just, that. It's just the title. It's just the title. So it's not like you might you might fix it. You might still fix it. You don't know. This is the thing, like my mate Bardi on the fighting cock, he was saying, look, he's a year into his job in terms of this is his first full season. There are problems at the squad that need fixing. He has the experience to do it. We're going through a a rough patch, but many other teams have gone through rough patches. Keep the faith. Give him your support and see what happens, which is the most wholesome and collective and holistic way to approach these problems as a football fan is just just wait and see you saw this no greater example than at Arsenal right just wait and see um but, but as football fans again going back to my idea that they are the very worst thing about our sport is people want him gone they want these like with venom like if you think of troops the way he behaved like that's I see I haven't watched troops recently is he is he does he like Arteta again no one watches him when we when they win, do they? It's not like he's a fucking bastion of sense and 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 makes incredible points, is it? His put his his role is to scream at that mate he's got in the thing, and that's what that's the that's the niche he's carved for himself. So um, 
to continue. You know, there are people. There's there's a guy. If you want to listen to to someone, an Arsenal fan with actual sense and talks decently about their club, then um, Harry from Ninety Men is. You know, I can't listen to him because goon still. But if you're not a goon and you want to hear someone talk sense, he's he can really do it. And he does it without all the bullshit that's usually associated with <laughs> Arsenal football. But, oh. Fair enough. Um, do you know what, Dad? Just reminded me. We um, a friend of mine is, and um, Flavs is a Rangers Glasgow Rangers fan, and he's done this genius thing I hadn't thought about. He started <laughs> listening to Celtic podcasts. <laughs> he listens so, and apparently he said he went he went back to the start of the season <laughs> when they're all really confident and just works his way through it as they slowly week by week get more and more. It must be absolutely brilliant. To listen to those kind of podcasts that's such a smart thing to do it's fantastic it's like and, and also also um you literally get to really live and experience their the slow misery that creeps into their lives yeah. in, in a really long-winded way <laughs> every moment of it <laughs> that's, one... true. that's true it's long yeah yeah it's a really long and bizarrely obviously when something goes on the internet Somehow, you know, with those club specific podcasts, they must think that this is that this is ours and will only be heard by ours. So you feel like you I presume you feel safe, you feel safe. So you then kind of rant even more than you would do because you're allowed to be yeah. vulnerable. And and so it's just like it's not like, you know, when you're bantering a mate down the pub and they, they're trying like they they blink or twitch and you go, ah, I got you rattled. It's like full on rattle. It's like 800 maracas for an hour. It's glorious. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. You're always acutely aware that when Spurs get pumped that we have fans of other clubs listening to our podcast. And we never ever give it to them. We never allow them to hear our pain. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We sugarcoat it, and uh, and often we'll start by not talking about the football. So hopefully they get bored and then fuck off. All right. Um, all right. That's interesting. And yeah, the other thing is uh, we we often keep them as well. Like we've got low. There must be about eighty. Well, it's hard to tell actually, but I, I reckon between about. Somewhere between 20 and 30 Liverpool fans who just listen to the pod every week and message to say, look, I'm a Liverpool fan, but I think it's good. Really? Yeah. Uh, right. Derby game. In partnership with Ben Spanton Walker. Ben's uh, popped one in this week again as well. Uh, he says, Tottenham versus West Brom is the our nicknames sound like gangs from a shite book. <laughs> Lily Whites versus the Baggies. Very good. <laughs> like that one. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, just to say, actually, not, not, <laughs> not everyone got it. Um, quite a few people said, oh, North West Derby, Midlands Derby, Wayne Rooney Derby for Man United Everton. Do you think maybe they're, they're winding you up? Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. <laughs> um, Philip yeah. Brown of X Hull, um, Bolton manager, I think it was Burnley manager, was he at some point as well? Burnley versus Brighton. Uh, the, we, the We won't get relegated, but, but for very different reasons, Derby. I am. Um, You've done this as well, the uh, the uh, bet builder show with Statman Dave. Oh, it's a delight. Uh, it's a delight. I did it yesterday with him. Um, how, uh, how did that go? Because you like, hate each other, don't you? So it's like I that's the. I think I was like I I I was like, does he hate me initially? I, I, he definitely like, hates. Does he? Yeah. I was like, what's going on with this guy? Like, does he hate me? <laughs> I don't think. No, I don't think he did hate me. I think he was fine with me. He's just like thought, oh, this is our thing, is it? We're gonna just be mean to each other, uh, <laughs> realizing that I'm a you know, fragile soul. Um, but we're now, now we're great. We're great, me, Dave. You? Yeah, it's really good. We had a nice chat yesterday. It was lovely. Um, like that's because when I was here, like, he was calling you a cunt loads. Uh, I, that's a joke. I made that up. <laughs> <sighs> Thank God. Um, <laughs> Thank God. Uh, no, but we're talking about yeah, we, yeah. So it's Brighton Burnley, and I was just like, I, I, this could go that the purism of Brighton could could you know get the win, or Burnley's pragmatism could get the win. Like, it literally, could toss a coin because sometimes you have got to make a bet and you got to go. I don't have any actually strong feelings on this game in terms of which way it's going to go. Um, and so I did that with Burnley Brighton because I, I did struggle. Um, and but I think he's right. Both teams won't get relegated, as will. Sheffield United, they won't get relegated either this year because they're going to be absolutely fine. Who goes down then? 
All right. Because I think this is actually this does need some manoeuvring from us because Sheffield United are on eleven points. They are. They need to double their points tally, and they've got a team who's got one game in hand on them. Uh, how, they they can get the, how many eighteen times three fifty four points? I think is that right? Right. The, okay. So they'll be they'll be absolutely fine. The, um, there's they fifty four points on the table. Uh, what's his face? Allardyce was saying they need thirty eight points. You know, generally you need yeah. thirty eight points to stay. Yeah, out. that's. So they do need a, they do need a lot of wins. But do. you know, it starts here. Look at that. Look is at that. that right? Is my maths right, Catherine? Tell me. Um, is that right? <laughs> Resident that accountant. Fifty-four. Then what? They can get fifty-four points. Yeah, I think there's fifty-four up to grabs. Is that right? Do you what's know what's weird yeah. is you kind of you could make a case for any team here to stay up. Sheffield United because they got the magic of the Jeff and podcast. West Brom just but be- just because of exam. Although generally they've been pretty woeful. Fulham generally play all right, but don't look. Then one in five. Mm. They don't seem to get the wins, do they? they something Burnley, needs to click for them. Burnley are safe. Do you think Burnley Ryan, will be fine? Ryan will be fine, obviously. Yeah. What well, Wolves need to be careful, you know. Just get a couple more wins. They should be complete. I'd, I'd be amazed if somehow they get, they do get dragged into it. But it might be just a storyline for a couple of weeks, and then it'll kind of shock them into getting a couple do of wins. Know? Do you know Wolves are uh, Nuno is second favourite to be sacked next. Really? I guess yeah. If, I don't. Uh, I don't think Wolves would do that. They give him a chart. Give him another go. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of people are talking about how boring the football is at Wolves. I think that, yeah. I think that's Wolves fans have been frustrated with that for quite a while. Quite mm. a while. Um, so you, I, then, we basically need Newcastle to get relegated. I think for sure. Is it since Jimenez? Is it since Jimenez's injury have they started to fall away? They were all very. They were very conservative before that. To be honest, I think. But they, you right. know, it's like a bit like bit like Spurs. You know, generally they were kind of doing all right, so it's fine. And I guess, I guess the problem for Wolves fans naturally is like you have a couple of good seasons, and then that is your expectation. And so when you drop mm. below it, then you start to get a bit annoyed. Um, so, so what we saying then? I'm saying West Brom. I'm going to say Fulham and Newcastle. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Can I ask a question? Always. Um, Harson who or? Mm. Is he? Is he any good? He's um. He good? Do you know what? That if you, imagine if you're like in a CV, you had to you had to put in your like failures as well as your successes instead of just your successes. His failures <laughs> would like rule him out for quite a few jobs, wouldn't they? Like, I'm thinking. Go, I've right, lost nine nil times two. I'm thinking. Can I have a manager managing my football club when in his career? Over two games, he's conceded 18 goals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can. I can't reconcile. Hard to reconcile that, Jim. I almost wanted him. I thought his reaction was like, I really wanted him to just go, Pff. I mean, it's, it was funny, wasn't it, by the end of it? Like, <laughs> anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Let's ch- like, don't worry about it. Got loads of injuries, it'd be fine. But instead, oh, he was yeah. just like, I'm so upset right now. But we will be stronger together. Oh, shut up. <coughs> just like laugh at it. Can we God, not just really? laugh? Can we not just laugh at it? I feel like like the Burnley Man City game, uh, Sean Dyche was like absolutely thrilled to get out there with a two 0 defeat. Like, they've lost five nil like the last five times they've played each other. Mm. And so uh, Sean Dyche is like a lot more he's, he knows I'm not getting sacked. This game doesn't define us. Don't worry about it. Like I think that's how he could have played it. I mean, Hasan Hurtle's good. He's a good manager. He's done well for them. Um, but these nine nils, yeah, th- that's enough now. That's got to stop. They've got beat five two as well this year. Oh, who was the um, who was the guy you said we wanted you wanted to talk about? There was this Southampton nine oh, nil thing. It pissed me off, man. It's like yeah, tweeting for fuck. You just got slapped nine nil. Like just shut up. This is like he's got like his tweeting. own Twitter account, right? Yeah, the celebrating the fact that they've been slapped. Like, I get Gallo's humour is one thing. But then it's like, follow me. Follow me here. I'll, all my tweets, black like, bang. Make sure you follow my account, though. It's like, can your team just got done. You should be embarrassed. But, like, what? not on Twitter celebrating it. Just pissed me off. Got like, what is this? What is what is Twitter good for football? Is this what... It's more important to get these tweets and retweets than it is... Like you're helping people take the piss out of your football club that you're supposed to love. Yeah, I can't find my, it here, but hopefully, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. Basically, it's a Twitter account just saying, "Has someone mentioned 
the nine nil yet. I can't find it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was a bit. I mean, I let, the only thing I wondered with that was, was it? Is it a Portsmouth fan? Yeah, if, in, in which case it's fine. But then I'm an idiot. But I, yeah. you know, it looks like a. It, it, it looks like it. Like the, the one that says, um, it says follow me on this account. It goes to a Southampton account. Mm. Right. Have either of the nine nils been mentioned? That's it. Right, we've uh, someone just said in the chat. There's a lot of football chat, so let's uh, let's calm that Sorry. down. Let's let's put a Sorry. pin in that straight away. Uh, let me run through the. Uh, number nine. He's literally retweeted the nine nil Southampton score, like you know the official post. Got to be a Pompey fan, surely. Uh, it's not. Okay. Well, right. right. Tom Whit Burnley versus Brighton is the first syllables of our names when combined. Give a song by the heavy Derby Burn. Right, Philip Brown, uh, former Hull manager. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, Man United versus Everton is the an enemy of an enemy is a friend. Derby. Who's your friend then, Flav? You got a friend? Enemy of an enemy is a friend. Uh, I've always had uh, a fondness for Manchester United purely for all of the trophies he stopped Arsenal from winning under Arsene Wenger. So I wouldn't call him a friend in any shape or form, but. I couldn't. I can't hate Man United like lots most people do because they cause so much pain and damage to Arsenal over the years. Fair enough. Uh, Reece, oh yeah, it doesn't really work for me because there's too many West London clubs. Yeah. Um, yeah, you should hate everybody. Yeah. Somehow. You, but don't. you don't know Jim, do you? Because uh, you're not filled. You're not filled with hate. You're filled with positivity and spreading love and kindness to all. That's it. Wolves versus Leicester. We can't without our win without our striker derby. Not true. Beat Fulham. Zach, Spurs versus West Brom. We sacked our manager for instant success. Now our fans hate watching us derby. Also, the everyone has made this same joke derby. Don't get it. Spurs, West Brom. For instant success. <laughs> well, Allardyce, I hope you keep him up. And Will, Sheffield United versus Chelsea is the locations where goals are most likely to be found. Derby. Um, and Palace versus Leeds is one for me, the uh, front of the queue manager for vaccination derby. You've got Bielsa. Good. Against my, dad's, my dad's been done. Great. Which one's yeah, he got? Happy. Which one did he get? Oxford. Hopefully. Yeah, it's the best that's one. That's a good isn't one, it? isn't it? Yeah, it's one that doesn't transmit, apparently. It's on the, it's on the decline, isn't it? Yeah, come on. You saw. I reckon, I know he's more important things, but pubs open. Can we do that first. <laughs> pubs open by May. Oh. Yeah, before the schools. Uh, right, that was... Oh, imagine, that... imagine James just sitting down, just a sweet amber nectar. Oh, just, that is the end of the football chat. Just looking at each other and just having a pint. Oh, what a dream. Do you, I'm do you, coming. Just sitting down... I haven't even seen your house. Right. I don't know where you live. Sitting down on... Sitting a job be great. Sitting down on... Ow! <laughs> just hurt myself. Sitting down on a, on a, on a bench in a pub garden putting your pint down, putting your hand on someone's shoulder and going, good to see you, fella. Oh! Yeah, like sitting down, beer garden, you sit down, your mate's in front of you, misses, quite, just a nice little pint of beer and just give her a thick finger and that's it. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what we all want, Flev. <laughs> <laughs> give her a finger. Well, just celebrate. Just celebrate. We're all just celebrating, all right? Um, from fingering... <laughs> Sam just came around. <laughs> I didn't say it, he said it. <laughs> Fab talks about fingering every week, fam. <laughs> oh, we're celebrating. It's not the 90s. I agree. Well, what do you mean? Don't it. start agreeing. Right. It, that, that's a wholesome thing. There should be more fingering. People should be fingering more. It's going straight to the sex. That's why SDIs are spreading. Fab looks so disappointed. <laughs> Put her earphones on. Put the earphones on her. I'll explain. Fab wants to explain. She doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to know. Oh, oh dear. You're in trouble. <laughs> I don't think I'm in trouble. You said it. I think I can get out of this one. What? You're not allowed to talk about sexual acts? And, because this is what? I don't know, mate. She's um, she's trying to get a, a, silent, a silent mouse. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Fab. <laughs> I was, my my link was from, from <laughs> my link was from fingering to lingering, because it rhymes. <laughs> I'll play it to you later, babe.
Love you. She looks so disappointed. Rightly so, what really. What? What? I've done a bit wrong. I think sometimes you're just like, what are you doing, Jim? With your life. <laughs> bringing, uh, bringing, yeah, bringing in a certain that. amount of coin. So <laughs> let's crack on. Um, sp <laughs> speaking of hungering. Linger moving on to lingering. And by lingering, <coughs> I mean goals and facts, which just will not go away. Um, we try to, but maybe this could be the end of it. Uh, so it's not goals and facts, really. It's goals and stories. Uh, Tom Whittaker, just checking in. <laughs> just <realize. laughs> uh, Just that five minutes and they go, right, come on, let's get back to work. Talk about <laughs> seagulls. <laughs> In trees. <laughs> <laughs> I just sometimes I like I'm aware I, I realise I sort of rise up out of my body. That's so trying to go right enough. This is to get back on track with a seagull story. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, Toby McCarthy, just checking in. Highlight of my week is when my cousins were chatting about things they'd never seen. I dropped in the infamous seagull in a tree line. General nod of agreement from everyone. Who says this pod, <laughs> who says, goal, yeah. Who yeah. Says this pod has no value? Cheers, lads. And Tom Whittaker, just checking in. I have a gold story, not a fact, a story. Well, to be clear on that, I like that. That could very well symbolise the end of gold facts. Whilst on a lovely seaside family holiday, walking along the beach, ice cream in hand, a helicopter swoops down in some sort of... <coughs> um, RNLA. What does that mean? It's Royal National Lifeboat oh, wow. Institute. Brilliant. Emergency situation. I think it's A. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. In doing so, a whole flock of now dead seagulls fall from the sky after the wake of the path of destruction of the big human-made metal bird onto the unsuspecting <laughs> holidayers and beachgoers. Oh, dear. So it's like a whole flock of seagulls just went into this. Terrible. This is <coughs> the literal end of these birds' lives. Maybe perhaps the metaphorical end to the bit that is gull facts. Yeah. I feel like it is. No more gull stuff for a bit. <laughs> Shouldn't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Should, <that's> need... <laughs> Could you imagine if you'd ever utter that sentence in your life? No, <laughs> no more gull stuff. So no more many sentences stuff. I never thought I'd say. No more gull stuff for now. That's <laughs> yeah, enough. <laughs> put, yeah, enough of that. Uh, petty acts. Jake, Jake Hopkinson. Um, so get your petty axe in the comments for next week. During Freshers' Week at uni, a flatmate of ours was refusing to come out and moaning every every night we came home late. I hate that. So yeah. we decided to raid his cupboard and remove... God, this the is not like the dark one again, is it? Where we put broken glass outside <laughs> no. of his doors. I haven't got that guy's comment in here, but he... Um, <coughs> yeah, explain. He, he said that apparently he got clipped up and put in a WhatsApp group and all his mates think he's mental. <laughs> <laughs> And in his comment, to be fair to him, he said he did help clean up the uh, yeah. thousands of shards of glass that he'd created. <laughs> uh, so, where are we? Uh, Freshers' Week, uni, flatmate doesn't want to go out. So he decided to raid his cupboard and remove all the labels <laughs> from his tins. For the rest of the year, he had to gamble with he was having soup, beans, or chopped tomatoes for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, we also stole the key to his corned beef tins. <laughs> Turns out they're so <laughs> difficult to open without... Uh, the little key yeah you've got, you've got to open them upside down because otherwise because they're, they're a bit like corn beef's a bit like that um, this isn't a sig call signal for corn beef chat uh, this is they're like they kind of go in a bit so if you open it that way you wouldn't be able to get it all out if you did want to get it all out um, corn beef why do people why is it still a thing why are people even oh, I really liked corn beef I haven't had it for ages how would you eat it just with a spoon? Sandwich. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a sandwich. 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 Uh, Owen Taylor. Hey, lads, just checking in. I went to lunch with my best mate yesterday. Oh, right. This, yeah. How do you feel about this stuff? I went to lunch with my best mate yesterday. He said he'd look after the table if I went and paid. He never offered to pay me back, so now I've just paid for his lunch like an absolute idiot. Other than that, last pretty good. <laughs> so if you, if you go pay, I'll keep the table, which we're about to leave anyway because we've just finished. Mm, got that's done strange. There. Got done there. That's really um, annoying. You need to find a way to get that money back. Because <laughs> you can't just yeah. go, or can you? Can you just go, 
are you going to pay me for that lunch? Because it's probably only. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I'd just go on. I would yeah. just swallow it. But yeah, you'd I think I would your rights to. I'd just go. That's a bit of a dick move. But what you, if you do want, just for your own kind of peace, what you can do is go go for a, <coughs> try and go for a drink with him at some point. Get him to get the first round in, and then make an excuse and leave. And that way, you've got at least a pint back. Yeah, the problem is, is like never, like never go out. Like in British culture, and this be something I'm sure it, it's, it applies everywhere as well, but. Especially in British pub culture, you you can't not buy around. You can't not pay your way in a pub. It's one of the most frowned upon things you yeah. can do in Britain. And it's not that people will hate you. They won't. Everybody is aware of it. It's something you're aware of instantly when someone's a, a punce. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, keeps dodging it. Just never offers and keeps dodging. And then and, and slowly by slowly, they just think less and less and less of you. So don't be that guy. If you can't afford to go to a pub, don't go. Or if you want, borrow the money off your mate first. Don't just ex- don't just say, oh, I won't borrow the money, just buy me pints, because people will see. <laughs> borrow the money, make it look like you're paying your way. Yeah, it's annoying. Uh, Christian Burgess, just checking in with a petty act. My mum used to get those Muller Corner yogurts with the three chocolate and three banana ones. This is brilliant. Oh, I love those, love those. Oh, they are good. So three chocolate and three banana ones. My brother didn't like the banana ones and they were my favourite. However, I would always eat the chocolate ones first, knowing that I would always get the banana ones at the end of it. Really yeah. Good. Great work. Good work, Kristen. Great work. He is now 19 stone, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Adam, something I'm not proud of and I never admitted to anyone. When I was 13, my class did a maths test. I copied the girl sat to my left. She didn't Clever. know. Inevitably, when the teacher marked them, he picked up on the near identical answers and decided she had copied me. And the teacher didn't mm. ever question me. That's terrible. She got no. the full hairdryer treatment and had to redo the test in her detention. Despite yeah, knowing the her. truth, I kept my mouth shut. Feels a bit Mourinho, win at all costs. Mate, absolutely. Sometimes life gives you a pearl. You've got to take it. Look, what, the, the thing is, she's done all the work. Her, you take all the glory. Who's, who's the real winner? Yeah, I think I think our I think our views on this says a lot <laughs> about our relationship. Uh, Rosanja <laughs> could be a new bit, uh, but childhood same. Not sure what that means. Something something you did as Child, a kid. That childhood you, shame. Childhood same, shame. Yeah. Sorry, this could be a new yeah. bit. Childhood shame. Something you did as a kid that you still sometimes feel bad about. When I was a child, I borrowed a copy of Time Splitters Two off a friend. Great game. A week or so later, I told my mum to take a pile of games to Blockbuster to trade in and somehow get the copy of Time Splitters got bundled in with it. I'm not quite sure how I pulled it off, but I told my friend that someone climbed in through my window and stole my PS2 games. I never had the heart to tell him. Well, yeah, but that's not that's not too bad because you didn't lose the game or sell the game or just steal it. It was one of those things. If you'd have gone to Blockbuster, they would have been able to tell that one of the games weren't theirs and you'd have got it back probably. Yeah, maybe send this I- clip to him. Idiot, idiot, idiot. Yeah. High quality rumours. These are some high quality rumours we're about to read. It's pretty self-explanatory. Tommy Boy, when I was at school sitting at the table in the dinner hall, a kid announced to seven of us that if you open a bag of Chris upside down, it's bad luck. At the time, I thought nothing of it. Who cares, I thought. But secretly, it stayed with me for 30 years. I can't open anything upside down. Pack of Chris, bag of cement. What a man. I love that. That's the second thing that popped into his head. Pack of Chris, bag of cement. Bag of cement. Because I'm, I'm off of doing renovations. A present, package of spaghetti. Package of spaghetti. Just packing it. Pack Nothing it. in 30 years. I still wonder if I'd open something upside before I found out about out about this and I'm damned to bad luck. Or if the more things you open upside down, the worse it becomes. I don't know what to do to undo the bad luck, by the way. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a high quality rumour because it's been living in your head rent free for 30 years. But I wouldn't worry about it. All right? Yeah, stop doing it. Stupid. Uh, second high quality rumour of the week Helga Kusuk weird rumour there was a story doing the rounds in my school year three a long time ago apparently one kid in the same year had got himself accidentally locked inside a classroom alone you see what's coming here the rumour was that when the teacher had finally gone over to unlock and open the classroom door the kid had taken a shit on the floor in the middle of the classroom weird thing is I don't remember the kid ever denying or confirming the rumour. What? 
what is it with fucking kids and shit at school, man? Every story's about Every kids. Every And uh, as if it's true. Like, why would he do it in the middle of the room just because he's, like, locked in this classroom? Like, he's locked in the classroom, right? So I'm going to go fucking mental and shit in the middle of the room. Like, what? what how long have you been in there to go feral? Why yeah. couldn't he just hold it? If, if He'd have to have been in there about eight hours in order to be forced himself to shit. And even then, he, 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 no one in their sane mind would go, right, I'm going to do it right in the middle of the room. You go it's, in the corner where there's protection. Yeah, that's true. Do it in the bin. There's got to be a bin there, isn't it? There's a bin. Um, Did he cover it up? Did he put a bin over it? We never confirmed a night. How are you not confirmed a night? Someone's asking you, surely. He just walks away. He just walks away. <laughs> just, does a weird, just does a weird face. He goes, <laughs> yeah. Looks up. Bizarre. Dennis Craig. If he tells oh. them the truth, he loses the power. Yeah, that's it. It's the speculation that... that uh, yeah, gives him gives him that, that edge, yeah. Right, Dennis Cregan. I've got a high quality rumor. The year is to is 2013, and my friends are all in our second year of college. We lived in what our school referred to as a suite. Eight guys, six bedrooms, one bathroom. What? I haven't read this. I can't remember. I just you I you've put in a 300 word message and you haven't read it. It'll be fine, Dennis Cregan. <laughs> I, I saw Dennis Cregan's name and I thought this will be fine. All right. One bathroom. That's that first thing. I'm like, why is he saying one bathroom? Naturally, it's, we, got... it's going to be shit, isn't it? Naturally, we were all very close. But as often happens, people's repeated patterns of behaviour become more and more frustrating over time. We all played in some mural sports together through the school. And on the whole, we were slightly above average. <laughs> we were able to make it to the semi-final of the American football finals that, that season, mostly because our quarterback was all state in high school which I think means good. We had some guys on the team that were, well, less than gifted on the field. Hang on, we've read this before, Jim. Have I? Yeah. You sure? 100% sure. This is that they pretend that he didn't, he couldn't be bothered. He's just like, I can't be asked to go. And, and uh, yeah, you have. He, he can't be asked to go. He's flaky. They win the game. They don't win. There was this kid who was shit. that He won a touchdown. Uh, they go home and pretend to the other guy that this shit kid had won a touchdown and then eventually they tell him. I don't even remember that at all, which is frightening. But I, I, I'll i take your word for it. All right. Just Hang on. Qu- it's only posted four days ago. <laughs> How do I know that? Because you've probably read through the comments, haven't you? I haven't. I never read through the comments, Jim. <laughs> Should I just... Is he posted it before? Somewhere? I don't, I don't know. Great How podcast. How do I know I this? I not I swear to God. Right, I'm not Dennis, reading it out I, I, until, I until me, we mate, find out. Me, it isn't, it's probably not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's a minute. We'll never get back. Right, final <laughs> one then. Walking in a Mackie Wonderland for the nicknames that stick bit. In school, that's someone in year nine music. got their bike nicked by another kid called Ga- Gary. Yeah, he got the bike them. back shortly afterwards. Keep in mind that this is in 2011, so not many young Garys knocking about <laughs> Yeah. The boy who bu- whose bike got stolen reacted horribly to any mention of Gary, so it became one of those nicknames you would say when he wasn't around and would get dared to say if he um, was around and made the whole thing ten times funnier because of the thrill of, catching, of him catching you say it. His <laughs> anger at the situation led to <coughs> his nickname from then on being Gary. <laughs> Whereas if he play, played along with it a bit, it would have been forgotten in a month or so. Yeah. It's now nine years later and everyone only remembers him as Gary. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> to rub salt in the wounds, he also... F- unfortunately wore chinos around this time just as they had massively dropped out of fashion in our area and age group and he happened to have a scottish last name beginning with muck e.g <laughs> mackenzie and mccoy this led to the full nickname being <laughs> gary M- <laughs> gary <Mancinos. laughs> that's fantastic uh, very good gary machinos Gary machinos uh right get your uh, high quality rumors and petty acts in for next week I'm really baffled about how I know that story. That's you really... started reading it, I was like... I don't I've think I've read it. it. I don't think I've read it. I haven't read this, but I'd never read the comments, I promise you. Are you, sh- are you sure this wasn't... Yeah, it was said four days ago, but you might have copied and pasted it in before then. Oh, it might have been from... Uh, you, I wonder if it was from a week, two weeks ago. Yeah. And I haven't read it yet, but you had somehow. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, right. FC Show. Story of the badge. Oh, yes. Yeah. Weird badge, yeah. Hang on, I'm not even sure if I've got... Oh, yeah, I have. Oh, yeah, there's... I was there's... worried. I might have done a homophobia. Yes, you were concerned about that. FC show, here it is. So here's the... 
There it is. See what I was getting at. See what I was getting at, though. Um, what did people say then? So they said there was a, there was only the, it, they can normally go or but no there can be only one reason for this. So there it is. So Flav was slightly concerned about is you know is this a gay football team or something like that due to these. I wasn't two. concerned that it was a gay football team. I was concerned. <laughs> No, I, I said something that was could have been offensive or homophobic. Of course, like, like me there. Thought, is it is it a gay football team because it's pink and there's a guy? I don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to explain what he's doing. Just, okay, there's a guy on it. Right, interesting, interesting, <coughs> interesting. You say that, Flav. Right, go on. Because John Throp has the answer. Oh. John Throp I heard from my uncle that FC Show's badge came about when the owner, Mister Sidus Sports Club, designed the badge with the sole intent of getting Flav cancelled. <sighs> Supposedly, he wanted revenge on Flav after he laughed at his crying son during Brazil's loss to Germany in 2014. He decided to, de- to design a well-groomed man wearing pink with his hand loosely pressed against his hip, <laughs> knowing, that this, knowing, that, knowing that this would bait Flav into gammon claims that this must be a gay football club, whatever <laughs> that means. That's, uh, that's the answer. Stupid, I apologise. Yeah, shame on you, shame on you. Um, um, so can yeah. we? Can, you know, one one of my favourite bits have been omitted from the show. What's your favourite bit? We only did it once. Where are the crying kids? I don't know. Why can't we bring kids. the crying kids back? It just doesn't. It doesn't feel right, does it? Oh, does it? oh, all right. Sorry, this is something you you feel awkward about. What, laughing at crying children? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, someone has written in the comments. Can't remember whose name is. Apologies for that. Uh, Tijuana, check out Tijuana's mascot. So we could be moving away from badges now to mascots. Um, I guess the badge works as well, though. The badge, wicked. That's yeah. one of the best, best fo- football. This looks a bit like Frankie. It's a Chihuahua, is oh, it? I presume. No, Doberman. By looks of it. Oh, is it? Okay. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so maybe. That is fantastic. But that's the mascot. Yeah, the mascot's terrifying. But I love that badge. It's probably my favourite badge. What is that? Really, musk the creepiest mascots in pro sports. FC Tijuana, Tijuana, Mexico. Can you say Mexico? Am I like that? Am I? Yeah, I presume so. Look, yeah. Really muscly dog. Very strange. Yeah. Why do they have a muscly dog on the badge? There he is with all his muscles. Really creepy. That is yeah. really. Creepy. Why is he so muscly? Is it like showing strength or something? Tijuana. So. Um. Yeah. I think oh we finish oh, off with oh we had our latin mottos so oh, yeah. i've got a cheeky birds in that um snippet as well actually uh, so we had our hello love you what you want headphones i think oh i've put them somewhere so, hang on do you see them You got there you go. What time are you starting? Like 20 minutes, right. Well, I'll be done, done. Okay. Uh, where are we? So yeah, Seb sent us this. This bad boy. There it is. But Tribio Us... Uh, uh, yeah. Um, where is it? So yeah, Seb Walton. Hi guys, just checking in. I'm the guy who made the badge. And for the context, the year it, and for context, the year is when James's channel was created. Ah. My suggestion for the motto would be "Quad generis de eu eu quadrigus," which translates to <coughs> oh, yeah. the sort of football football team. Uh, thought this would go nicely with the sort of football football podcast. Yeah, I, I guess the weird thing with this is where is this going? Are we actually creating a football team? I don't think I've got the energy for that. Do you? No. <laughs> Good dramatic pause there. Uh, a couple of other Latin mottos that people put forward, just checking in. Motto has to be, I will play and will win, which in Latin, I think is, O ludarimus et vincerimus in ego. I quite like that. Uh, Aqua firma, est perfectum solent me- mediocris ludi. There is perfection in mediocrity. <coughs> These were the ones from last week, weren't they? And uh, last one was... Uh, Translates to Levitimed Pedem Pila Maxim Iniptius. Football, mainly nonsense. Mm. And the new one for this week was I Slug, Therefore I Am from Tin Face. 
Ego Limax, ego, limax. ego Ego Sum. Quite like that. Yeah, I like that's maybe the, the I winner. Slug, maybe. therefore I am. Finally, we haven't had birds in that for a while, but I, I, I just thought, you know, we are doing a bit of, you know, we're doing good for the for the boys and girls out there. And I didn't realise until I read this comment from Sam King. Hey guys, just checking in. A girl messaged me recently and I asked her to send me a picture of her to see what she looked like. What do you mean to message what you are like? How what? So out of the blue? I don't know. Uh, Probably Bumble, I presume. She was beautiful. So I thought this was too good to be true. So I said to her, can you send me a picture of you holding a spoon so I know you're real? And she blocked me. So we've saved you there, mate. A catfish. You're welcome. You're welcome. You'd be, she or he would be wearing your skin by the week out. Exactly. We saved your life. We saved Saved your life. life. Right, guys. That is it. it. That's it. Good. (laughs) Good. Good. And I think our energy is dipping a bit, I feel. Oh, we've had such a long week. Like, I'm, um, I'm pooped and I've still got to watch fucking Tottenham Chelsea game and record stuff about it. So, um, yeah, we've been going for nearly two hours, Jim, to be fair. That's true. Uh, if you want to hear us talk again tomorrow on the Stereo app, <laughs> 12. Hopefully you could just send loads of voice notes so we don't have to talk too much. That would be brilliant. Uh, make sure you join us. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you're still here, might as well click it now surely <laughs> hit the like button as well <laughs> thank you to the patrons for sticking sticking with us <laughs> for the madness that was that podcast felt more like a live stream than a podcast which I guess it is anyway I'm going to stop talking goodbye everyone bye <laughs> bye <laughs>